Dilly in the body snatcher right here. It's a champ. Big up the sports and icon. Subscribe. Otherwise, I might pay you guys a visit. So I want to talk a little bit more about Dillian White versus Oscar Rivas. Of course, uh, Dillian White's silver WBC title will be on the line as well. And this will be on July the 20th at the O2 Arena in London. Of course, originally, they've been saying for a long time it's going to be July 13th. But maybe they've seen 13 as an unlucky omen. So they said, stuff it, you know what, 20th it is. So he's going to be taking on Oscar Rivas. And I'm presuming that that fight is going to be shown in America on ESPN. The reason that I'm saying that, even though nothing has officially been um, said about that one yet, is because Oscar Rivas is part of top rank Bob Arum, who, of course, air their shows on ESPN. And, of course, there's also been a lot of talk about Dillian White doing a co-promotional deal to show all his fights on ESPN, much like Tyson Fury has. So we could probably presume correctly that uh, that's what's going to happen. But there again, me and my presumptions on the, on the morning of them announcing Dillian White versus Oscar Rivas, I should have known better. Um, I should have texted Dillian White. In fact, I actually thought about it, where I predicted that he was going to fight Alexander Povetkin. And I was so convinced of it, I thought, you know what, I don't need to text him. So I didn't. In hindsight, I should have done. I could have saved myself a lot of time and a bit of embarrassment. But Oscar Rivas, it is. 26 and 0, with 18 of those by knockout. And he's pretty heavy handed. He's not the biggest guy in the world. He's only six feet tall or just a little bit over. And he's 31 years old from Colombia, but resides in Canada. This is a very, very capable opponent, very dangerous opponent for Dillian White. Now, I know that a lot of people are. Um, hyped for this fight as I am too and but there are some people who are saying man I wish it was Luis Ortiz I wish it was Alexander Povetkin or whatever it may be but you have to remember now Dylan White was promised that um, he was going to have a result from the WBC two weeks ago so the WBC had been dragging their heels like no business okay and had they have manned up if you like and made a decision who knows maybe it would have been Dean White versus Luis Ortiz for the official mandatory to take on the winner of Wilder Brazil had Dean White been a PBC fighter an American they'd have probably sorted that out for him but because we know the WBC and the PBC's relationship seem to be very very clickety click right but as the WBC has so far not not mandated it Dean White isn't going to be waiting around because he knows that basically the WBC, you just can't trust them to do the right thing. So he's gone out and he's got Oscar Rivas undefeated. Now, Oscar Rivas is ranked number 10 in the WBC. So Dillian White yet again fighting um, another top 10 in the WBC. This will be Dillian White's third opponent who's currently ranked in the top 15. Bearing in mind that Deontay Wilder, the champion of the WBC, has only fought and defeated one, which is Luis Ortiz. The other one he got a draw against Tyson Fury. So already... As far as the WBC goes, Dillian White's going to have a lot more. Now, Rivas, as I said, number 10 WBC. He's number, I'm, I'm going off the top of my head here, I think he's number 5 in the WBA, number 7 in the IBF, and number 6 in the WBO. So either way, top 10 through all the sanctioning bodies. Now, Oscar Rivas, the best win on his resume, you could probably argue, is Brian Jennings. So again, for those who are saying, but we prefer it to be Luis Ortiz, I get it, but purely for name. But ultimately, who's the best win on Luis Ortiz's resume? It would be Brian Jennings, right? When Brian Jennings previously lost to Vladimir Klitschko, the very next fight, he got straight in there with Luis Ortiz. Okay, but Oscar Rivas defeated Brian Jennings in his last fight there in the final round of their fight. Now, the judges did have Brian Jennings winning that fight by two rounds, three rounds, and one of them had it by one round up until the final knockout. So... Is there really any kind of difference whether Dillian White fights Luis Ortiz or he fights Oscar Rivas? Luis Ortiz is ranked in only two of the sanctioning bodies. Oscar Rivas is ranked in all four in the top ten. So you could probably argue that Oscar Rivas is probably a better opponent in some ways. But in other ways, Luis Ortiz could arguably be more dangerous. For sure, why not? But Oscar Rivas is not one to be overlooked. Oscar Rivas can beat Dillian White. Potentially, at least, anyway. You wouldn't favour him to do so, but that's purely because Dillian White is starting to show that he is an elite heavyweight, where he could be anybody, literally anybody in the heavyweight division on his day. It could happen legitimately. Um, so, this is another one. It's not a keep busy fight at all. It's a dangerous fight. As Dillian White does, he takes on dangerous fights. You could say, well, but, you know, Derek Chisora, what, twice? Not really. Well, 
Derek Chisora is always up for a Dillian White fight. Have you ever seen Derek Chisora more motivated for a fight than what he is against Dillian White? You'll probably never see it again, to be fair, either. So, did Derek Chisora that fought Dillian White? It's very, it's very, very good, to be honest. But anyway, I like this fight. I think it's a very decent fight. It's going to be pay-per-view. Eddie Hearn has already said that the undercard is going to be pretty stacked. But we kind of know that anyway because Dillian White, as the pay-per-view headliner, he always has a say on the undercard. And Dillian White likes to put on a very, very stacked undercard. He really does. And if I could uh, put in a suggestion, maybe Alexander Povetkin versus Luis Ortiz on the undercard. Come on, body snatcher, make it so. Um, or a Derek Chisora versus Joseph Parker. Dave Allen versus David Price. All three of those fights. Preferably, if not, at least one of them we do. Um, but I like this fight. As I said, it, um, it is a dangerous fight for Dillian. Um, Oscar Rivas, pretty heavy-handed. I mean, again, you could say, you know, just looking at his resume, he hasn't got any kind of names on his resume, but he does have some decent opponents. Just looking at their record. I mean, before Brian Jennings, he defeated a 26 and 0 guy with 25 knockouts in Fabio Maldonado. I don't know too much about that guy, but he dominated this guy. Oscar Rivas outpointed him by some distance. Um, just going by the official record, he won every single round. Okay, so yeah, very decent opponent, and I know that a lot of people do like this fight. I do like this fight also. And, but I do understand why some people are saying, but it should be a, um, a Lewis Ortiz or a Povetkin or whatever. But the fact is, if the WBC aren't going to pull their finger out, what's Dillian White supposed to do? He's taken on someone who's ranked top 10 in all sanctioning bodies. And I've seen people like Coogan Cassius, and I've seen other people within their kind of circle saying, but is it really pay-per-view? Should it really be pay-per-view? I'm not too sure if this fight is pay-per-view. Come on, man. It's supposed to be your friend here. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, come on now. It is pay-per-view. Dillian White is a pay-per-view fighter, okay? He does need a pretty decent opponent, but it doesn't have to be a stellar opponent. And Oscar Rivas is a very good opponent. So yes, it is pay-per-view. But as I said, Dillian and Eddie Hearn will work on a very, very good undercard. In fact, I would fully expect not only one of those three heavyweight fights, but potentially, maybe even, Hosea Burton versus Craig Richards could well be on there. As I know, Craig Richards is very good friends with Dillian White. Uh, Fabio Wardley as well, another heavyweight prospect coming through, could be on there, and a handful of others. So I do expect a very good undercard, but either way, with or without a good undercard for me, it's a very decent fight, and I'm quite happy to pay 20 quid. Honestly, I am. So anyway, that's my thoughts on all. Very good fight. You drop your thoughts below. Click thumbs up, and of course, subscribe. Catch you all on the next video.